I ran out of time in the previous video clip to finish our topic, as my video clips can only be 15 minutes at this point. But anyway, let's, let's review what we talked about in the last video clip. We introduced the intertropical convergence zone, a low pressure region where the air is rising. And then eventually in the upper atmosphere, it, fall, it cools and falls back down towards Earth at around 30 degrees north and south to create a high pressure zone, the subtropical highs. The surface winds that connect these two regions are the trade winds flowing divergent and clockwise out of the subtropical highs towards the intertropical convergence zone. Another wind also flows out of the subtropical highs, also clockwise divergent flow, showing the westerlies flowing from the high pressure of the subtropical high towards the low pressure of the subpolar low, or also called the polar front, which it exists about 60 degrees north and south latitude. This region, the subpolar front, is characterized by rising air, cloudy skies, storms, and unsettled weather. A typical low pressure area that just happens to be in a cooler part of the globe. It's a mixing zone with warmer winds of the westerlies meeting the frigid winds coming in from the poles. Study the diagram here that shows all the pressure and wind systems. The only one we haven't yet talked about is the polar high and the polar easterlies. The polar high exists near the poles, and as the cold air descends downward, it creates a high pressure zone with clear skies. It seems counterintuitive to think that the poles could be sunny and clear, but indeed that's, that's the case a lot of the time. The polar high is present over both the north and the south pole, but it's more consistent over Antarctica than over the Arctic because the land, Antarctica, cools off faster and to a greater extent than the mainly oceanic region of the Arctic. Our final wind, the polar easterlies, originates in the high pressure polar high and flows clockwise convergent flow from the polar high to the polar front. Again, you can see it as an easterly wind because it's flowing from the east towards the low pressure of the polar front. Next, I encourage you to put all this together and draw yourself a model of the entire system, or at least of the northern hemisphere. You can start with a circular diagram or a more rectangular diagram, but in either case, start labeling the equator and noting the ITCZ, then draw 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees and label the different pressure zones with their correct names. From then, start with the subtropical high, make a high pressure cell, and draw divergent clockwise flow out of that cell to create the northeast trades and the westerlies. Lastly, from the polar high, create the polar easterlies by also drawing divergent clockwise flow. I'll show you my simple sketch as I go here to show that you don't need to be an artist to do this. Here I've drawn the ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone, at the equator. Now I'm going to draw the subtropical highs at 30 degrees north and south. There, I have both 30 degrees north and south, two subtropical highs. Next, I'm drawing the subpolar lows at 60 degrees north and south. All right, I've got those drawn. Notably, I use the term subpolar low. That's how I learned it, and up until recently, that's how a lot of geography textbooks talked about this low pressure zone at 60 degrees. Your book and most books now call it the polar front. Um, I don't care which term you use. I like subpolar low because it reminds me that it's a low pressure zone. All right, the only thing left to draw 
is our polar high at 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south. Great, we've drawn the four pressure zones in both the northern and southern hemisphere. Now we're going to work on the winds. And to do that, I'm going to draw a high pressure cell here. Label it a high pressure cell just to remind myself. And then draw the surface winds that typically come out of a high pressure cell. Clockwise, divergent flow. I'll mimic these arrows, the direction of them, throughout the region here, noting that it's clockwise and divergent. Similarly up here, doing the same thing. And you've just drawn two out of the three wind systems. Can you label them? From the subtropical high to the equator, I have the northeast trades. And from the subtropical high, around 30 degrees, to the subpolar low or the polar front, I have the westerlies. Lastly, our last wind, the polar easterlies, comes from the pole. Again, we name winds from, from the direction they come from. So the polar easterlies comes from the pole and the east. You can think of it again as just being similar to the trade winds, clockwise divergent flow from the poles. Alrighty, we did it. Northern Hemisphere is done. I can quickly sketch in the winds from the Southern Hemisphere. They're just simply a mirror image. Students that take an in-person class from me often have to draw this model on their exams. I'm unlikely to have you do that, as there's no good way for me to have you do that on an online exam. However, I could ask you questions about the predominant wind, wind flow in different parts of the world. If I gave you a latitude, say, 10 degrees north, you should be able to tell me the dominant wind direction from where they get their winds. Well, if they're at 10 degrees north, they'd be within the northeast trades, so their wind would be coming generally from the northeast. If I gave you a location of 35 degrees north, that would be in the westerlies. They generally get their wind some way from the west. Similarly, if I said 48 degrees south, well, again, that's in the westerlies. Everywhere between 30 to 60 degrees north and south gets their wind predominantly from the westerlies. Everywhere between 0 and 30 degrees north and south gets their wind from the trade winds, the northeast trades or the southeast trades. So you should become fairly familiar with this diagram and be able to understand it well enough that you could even reproduce it. One last thing. As you look at the general wind flow here in the northern hemisphere, noticing again the clockwise direction from the trade winds and the westerlies, then look back and look at the general ocean circulation. So not air, but now water circulation that occurs in the northern hemisphere. It's that same clockwise motion. Indeed, it's the trade winds and the westerlies, our atmospheric winds, that are driving ocean circulation. It might be worth reviewing the ocean circulation patterns again as well. It's pretty cool to think that all the western parts of the ocean basins have warm water coming up from the equator. So thus all the eastern parts of continents have warm water currents. All the western parts of continents have cold water coming down from the poles. And this holds true also in the southern hemisphere. The eastern coasts of continents have warm water, and the western coasts of continents have cool water. As in the southern hemisphere, the circulation is the opposite, counterclockwise. All right, we're done with this video clip. The final thing you should do before moving on is to go to the Mastering Geography study area and check out the Global Atmospheric Circulation Animation that they have posted there.